Previously on Tribal Avengers. Goose was on the loose, but Yotter was hot on her trail. <coughs> he drew her near with his subtle coos. <coughs> Alas. <coughs> he failed. Yotter, Elvine, Dromedary, Fernand, they all needed help, and Kiyosuke was the only one capable of giving it. But he listened to the call of his heart and rushed to Cinnamon's aid first. Hoping the others would be able to survive for a little while on their own, he carried Cinnamon to their room and started tending to her wounds. Most of the animals were able to get there by themselves and were patiently waiting for treatment of their many injuries. Kiyosuke decided to help Yotter next, wishing Goose was able to contribute, but she has once more shown her humanity was well and truly gone and after drinking some milk she found, fell asleep surrounded by the wounded and corpses. With Yotter's bleeding stopped, Kiyosuke hurried to bring Elvi. While dressing her wounds, Cinnamon once more displayed an enviable endurance and got up, and Yotter, determined to continue down the true warrior path, stood up as well enduring the pain without even a hint of a hissy fit. Sadly, this came too late for the wounded dromedary, which bled out from its many wounds, so our tribe lost yet another dear friend. But, just as one life left the sad black rhino tribe, another was about to enter it. In this dire situation, Yotter felt he should make it a priority to tame the wild man, who was now exploring the base, and it would seem his animalistic instincts weren't as fierce as Goose's, as his reason was restored on the first attempt. Regaining the ability to speak, he told them his name was Blargo. In his previous life, he was an accomplished crafter and a skilled miner, quite proficient in ranged combat. But it would seem his sense of morality was somewhat less than ideal. However, this positive event proved to be but a very brief respite in the series of calamities surrounding these people. And first, the Mufalo died from its wounds, followed by Elvine suffering a complete mental breakdown and attacking the recovering dromedary. Elvine was both merciless and swift in her vile act, and the dromedary was dead before Kiyosuke was able to provide aid. But his interference only provoked Elvine further so she furiously attacked him as well. But Kiyosuke wasn't as helpless and unsuspecting as her previous victim, and Elvine, never being much of a fighter, got knocked out by his first well-placed hit, ending this berserking episode. No one can be sure of how they will react in a desperate situation. But murderous rage is definitely not the response of a well-adjusted, level-headed person. This shocking event has finally made it clear why Elvine's behavior was so erratic or odd at times. And members of the tribe now knew that when the going gets tough, it might not be the best of ideas to turn their backs to Elvine. The tribe lost one Mufalo and both dromedaries, 
but the worst of the raid aftermath was finally over. Thinking about how much worse it could have been, Kiyosuke decided to visit the graves of the unfortunate travelers, whose superior bow he used to stop the abduction of yotter and cinnamon, and thank them once more for their help, as involuntary as it had been. It could be said that things were finally returning to normal, but in the context of this story, that meant Yotter chased after a nude old woman in the wild, once more failing to bring her back to the fold. And Elvine and Blargo, realizing they share some personality peculiarities, had the following conversation. Elvine said, You know, I'm a hostile cook. When people complain something I made isn't good, Next time I spit in their food. To which Blargo replied, I used to do that. Now I use some mushrooms, which make them puke their guts out for the next few days. Ooh, you really must give me that recipe. I don't like savory food. Makes me thirsty, so I have to go fetch the water. You do that? I just drink someone else's when they are not looking. Oh my, I'm learning too much today. Just lovely. Anyhow, Yotter continued his taming efforts with Goose, but it would seem that the constant presence of this, to her eyes unfamiliar creature, started to annoy her greatly and she attacked to chase him away. Yotter didn't want to hurt Goose, so he tried just to avoid her onslaught. But if you recall, we already said that the usual debilitating effects of age didn't seem to affect her in the slightest. Yotter ended up on the floor, and Goose continued her rampage until the combined forces of Kiyosuke and Blargo finally managed to overpower her. Goose, screaming her lungs out, was taken to her old room by Blargo while Kiyosuke helped Yotter get up and reach his bedroll. Even though he had many scratches and bruises, his pride was hurting the most because this aspiring model of warriorship had just gotten beaten up by an old lady in the buff. At the same time, Elvine once more demonstrated her unpredictability by refusing to get out of her bedroll and do anything. While that meant the tribe again had one less member to rely upon, this method of venting frustrations was certainly preferable to assassinations, so they chose to leave her to it. Kiyosuke then helped Goose with her injuries, hoping the old room might spark some recognition and make her more susceptible to taming. But as soon as she was able, Goose ran out to be free and wild again. Yotter came after her, trying once more before she wandered off out of their sight. But again, Goose just didn't care about his cooing and reluctant caressing. The next day, the tribe was visited by a caravan of traveling merchants who decided to stay a while and rest in the nice village center. Meanwhile, a decision about the carcasses of the dead animals was needed, and although there were some objections, the majority decided they couldn't eat these faithful companions, 
without whose aid the last raid would surely have had much worse consequences. Kiyosuke dug three graves and placed their fallen friends in. After which, he went to sleep, feeling that was absolutely the right thing to do. Not yet fully recovered, Goose had collapsed in the brush. But fortunately, Cinnamon heard her cries and took Goose to her room once more, thinking she would surely this time stay, after they fed and helped her. But no, seems like this wild goose hasn't yet had enough of the chase and escaped her room once more. Fearing she might collapse again, somewhere out of the reach of their help, Kiyosuke decided to forcefully detain her and keep her locked up until she can be brought back to reason. But just like Yotter before him, Kiyosuke discovered Goose wasn't inclined to go anywhere Goose didn't want to go and had to use serious force to subdue her. And while once more attending to her, he discovered that he was a bit overzealous while restraining her, which resulted with Goose's right arm being severely injured and permanently unusable. Oopsie Daisy. Hoping that the now weakened Goose will instinctively be willing to continue receiving aid and food from them, they led her out of the room and Yotter initiated yet another taming attempt. She was obviously hungry, frantically searching for food, and Yotter readily offered her some rice which this half-blind, one-armed, 83-year-old, naked, wild woman refused once more. Amazingly, Chance again brought to their base the three members of that same faction which gifted them the War Tabard. And upon seeing what is going on here, they displayed uncanny generosity. This time their gift was a masterwork golden royal bed, an object far more beautiful than any member of the tribe had ever seen. One can only imagine the wealth of their people if they were able to freely give such items to poor tribes. Although, if you really think about it, you must wonder why were the three of them traveling with it? And possibly even more important, how? Regardless, as they were the only couple in the tribe, it was clear the bed will end up in Kiyosuke and Cinnamon's room, which made her ecstatically happy, and she immediately organized a party to celebrate. After his recent surprising decision to confide in her, Cinnamon was under the impression Yotter was really in need of a friend, which made him reach out to her. Being kind-hearted, she approached him and started to chat, hoping this time he wouldn't leave abruptly. To break the ice, she decided to pay him a compliment. You're so skilled with animals, Yotter. I bet you could tame even a giraffe to which Yotter rolled his eyes and said, Oh no, you're one of them! Demonstrating once more his distaste for people who believe giraffes exist on Rimworld. And in his defense, they really don't. But Yotter said it with a tongue-in-cheek air about him, as he indeed wanted to take the opportunity to befriend Cinnamon. So he made a joke. I know you girls take great care to keep a smooth complexion, so it might interest you to hear that I know what causes dry skin. 
Indeed, Cinnamon was very keen to learn that. Tell me, tell me. The main cause of dry skin is towels. Cinnamon took this bit of teasing and good humor, and they continued to joke and laugh, enjoying the party. But Goose's hunger reached such a level that to her cataract's infested eyes, something about Yotter's shape suggested he might be edible. With a ferocious growl, she charged. In the ensuing chaos, Yotter once more tried to avoid fighting her, and Cinnamon helped him using only the handle of her axe. But Goose was yet again relentless, and Yotter ended up having to use full force to stop her. This time it was him who tended to Goose, and while feeding her, took advantage of the fact she couldn't elude him, and used his taming techniques on her again. And at long last, Yotter's skill managed to break through Goose's condition, and she woke up a human once more. Not a happy one, mind you, with many wounds and a crippled arm to boot, but a human nonetheless. Needless to say, it was Yotter who felt the greatest relief and joy upon hearing Goose speak to them again. What happened? Did I overdo it with the sacred herb again? I really need to cut back on the sacred herb. She immediately went to the storeroom to find some clothes and armor and it would seem there were still some remnants of animalistic tendencies in her, because she chose to arm herself not with a spear, but with a thrumbo horn. With Goose finally back, Cinnamon and Kiyosuke decided to go ahead with their plans and replace her crippled leg with a wooden one, which would bring an increase of movement speed and provide her with more stability in combat. Kiyosuke performed the procedure, and after a short rest in their magnificent bed, Cinnamon was out in the field, almost as agile and fast as she was before. Things seemed to start to improve for our tribe. Even Elvine was finally out of her room. But apparently, she didn't like what she saw outside and went right back into hiding. The following day, a messenger came with an offer from a chief of a friendly tribe. He asked them to clear a camp of their enemies and in return offered an exquisite piece of medieval armor, which would be a substantial upgrade in protection. It would certainly be risky but for such a great reward, they decided it was worth it. Yotter, confident in his fighting abilities, came up with a plan. He was sure Blargo and him could take some traps and with ease defeat the three enemies guarding the camp. So they started to prepare for the trip. During the preparations, they realized they didn't have enough provisions for both the expedition and those who will stay in the base. So they decided to first go hunting and stock up on meat as fast as possible. To achieve that, they needed to hunt the biggest animals around. And working as a team, they chose a mega sloth as their prey. After the initial attack, Largo kept the animal occupied while Kiyosuke and Yotter peppered it with arrows. And soon, the Mega Sloth was down. What a difference compared to the days when Yotter was hunting alone. The three of them were infinitely more efficient. So they repeated this tactic again, and soon,
another mega sloth was on the way to their kitchen. But it would seem Goose was still not completely back to her old self, as the pain and the resentment over her crippled arm exploded in the form of a murderous rage directed at Blargo. Being quite fleet of foot, Blargo avoided Goose's attacks, not unlike he recently did with the Megasloths, not wanting to inflict any further injuries upon her. For some reason, Goose was so focused on Blargo that others could just keep on doing whatever they were doing, completely safe from Goose's fury. Blargo's expectations that Goose will soon tire and give up the chase proved to be completely wrong, as the hunt lasted the whole night. It was at the start of a new day that Goose took her sights off Blargo, but only to set them upon Alvin, who now had to take the role of a chased prey. Again, ignoring everybody else, Goose stubbornly tried to close the distance to her target. Hour after hour after hour. As the others went about their daily business, one might say that all this was exceptionally bizarre. But after everything we've seen in this story, was it really? Largo was resting after his all-night dance with Goose. Kiyosuke was making provisions for the expedition. Cinnamon finished a cape which will keep Yotter warm while traveling, and went back to sewing. And hours kept on passing. As the sun was setting, famished Elvin noticed Goose slowing down a little and decided to risk grabbing a meal. She sat at the table and tried to eat it as fast as possible, but just as she finished and tried to run again, Goose finally managed to reach her quarry. Taking advantage of her poor eyesight, Elvin slipped away and the chase resumed. As if she were some sort of demon, Goose just wouldn't let up, and Elvine had had enough of the avoidance strategy. She started shooting arrows at Goose, hoping to stop her, but being a poor shot, the arrows flew harmlessly past Goose, and she remained unfazed by their whistling. Despite being almost three times younger, it was Elvin who finally collapsed from exhaustion, and Goose let loose a victorious cry, seeing her prey was unable to run anymore. But that was a signal to the others to stop ignoring these surreal events. And they finally all rushed to stop Goose, which was achieved by one of Kiyosuke's arrows. What else is there to be said but, yes, all that really happened. Kiyosuke helped Goose get to her room and, once more, tended to her wounds, while the tribe continued with their preparations for the bandit camp quest. Yotter and Blargo loaded equipment and food on Fernand and the Mufalo and set out to find the bandits harassing the neighboring tribe. Almost as if they were waiting for such an opportunity, 
precisely then, a new group of attackers showed up. But this time, it was not naked tribals with shoddy bows and clubs. Oh no. This was a small group of the same medieval raiders faction, which destroyed their old home. Only four of them, with no traps or animals, against intruders in steel armor, arms with sophisticated weaponry? It would seem the sad black rhino tribe was about to face their greatest challenge yet. Next time on Tribal Avengers. The tribe finds a moment for rest and relaxation. Until a friendly competition turns ugly. My rendition of you throwing a rock. <laughs>